On this final edition of Region Sports Desk, here we are, state finals 2011. We've got five games, hopefully five winners. setting up for some type of a show, some, maybe a concert of some sort, but uh, I'll tell you what, this Friday and Saturday, uh, it's, it's down to the nitty gritty. Five teams are going to be taking home blue rings. Let's, uh, let's, let's talk about it and we'll, we'll figure out who's going to take home those uh, state championships. And, 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 you know, you can't make it down here, but we understand it. But you know what? All five games, MidAmericaBroadcasting.com, it begins 2 o'clock Central. Friday afternoon, 1A through 5A, the whole shebang. And I tell you what, we are going to bring great coverage on behalf the whole season. We're going to end up with a bang, and uh, I'm looking forward to the best weekend. It's also a sad weekend because no more high school football after this weekend until right. the pads come out in late July, early August. But it's going to be a heck of a weekend. We've got 10 great teams vying for championship glory. Let's go over uh, the first, first matchup in, in Class 1A. Uh, the defending, two-time defending state champion Lafayette Central Catholic Knights. They're going to be uh, playing Indianapolis Cecina. Cecina defeated uh, Lynn Stockton uh, last uh, Friday night to advance to the state championship. They shut them out. A team that was empty in the mid-50s per game all year, too. Really, uh, both games, the same score. 17 to nothing victories for both, for both schools. You know, certainly with LCC, we always talk about uh, their offense. The, the numbers their offense puts up every week. But it was their defense that carried them through against Sheridan and that enabled them to make their third consecutive state finals appearance. They've only given up 89 points all year. And it's been a trend. You know, it's offense, offense, offense with the Knights. But their defense gets overshadowed all the time. They've given up some, you look at during this 44 game winning streak, I don't think they've given up 200 points in these 44 games. That's how dominant they've been on both sides of the ball. But they're going to come up against a team with no offense to foul and something they in the last few years, this might be the best team they faced in the last few years at this level. But this is Santa Cruz State. They're a power running team, big size up front, and this could be an interesting match. I think this has the potential of being a closer game than maybe people think before they give Central Catholic their third straight championship automatically. I think this could have a, be an interesting ball game. Yeah, you know, their defense has been uh, very tough, as you mentioned. They don't have a lot of size defensively. Uh, and when you when you think of uh, uh, Cecina, they do have some size up front, and as you mentioned, they're a power right team. They're going to come right at you. They, they, they have two thousand yard rushers too. I mean, they can uh, you know they can present some problems, you know, uh, to to uh, to CC that they really haven't seen all season. You know, uh, uh, Rensselaer's a power right team, but they're not at the level uh, of, of a Cecina. So so this really could be a much more intriguing matchup than I think a lot of people would have would have thought when the playoffs began. So, so this could really be a, a pretty legitimately close contest. I think Cecina's got a great blueprint on how to beat Central Catholic. Now granted it hasn't been done in three years since the section semifinal in 2008. But a power running game, control the ball, kill the clock, shorten the ball game. And they also have a coach who's been there and done that in Ock Hurley. I think that's really going to be a very key. Can he get that done? Can, he, can the Crusaders get it done? 
it's going to be an interesting game, but I just think Central Catholic, and yeah, that's another thing we really keep at, especially at this level. Most of these kids, third year in a row here for Kevin O'Shea and the Knights, they've been there, done that. None of these kids for us to were around the last time they won a state championship 20 years ago. Hot Hurley's been here and done that. The kids, they don't have an idea. Nerves, always a factor. I think Central Catholic's going to be the more subtle down team early on. I think they'll get a couple of early scores. Cecilia will find her legs a little bit, but in the end, I see Central Catholic winning their third and roll. I see this being a 28 7 type ball game. Well, I, I think I'm going to you know, completely uh, agree with that statement. And uh, one aspect of the game that doesn't get talked about a lot uh, special teams. Uh, when you think of special teams, you think of Danny Anthro. You can't kick it to him. Can't you know let the ball go anywhere near him because it's almost I mean he's he's like uh, the high school version of Devin Hester when he gets the ball in his hands he's in the open field so you know for Cecina if they're going to punt the ball kick the ball they have to keep away from Anthem at all times which means they're going to sacrifice field position I think field position is going to be huge a huge factor in this game and if you're going to give LCC short fields that's going to be major trouble. It and talking to Hot Hurley, I asked him his key to the game, and he said, number one, absolute foremost, last, we have to contain Anthony. That's the ball game right there. And you know what, uh, West Lafayette did a pretty admirable job of that, and they had a shot at the end. They, they did lose by a touchdown, but they had a chance at the end. Uh, but I have to agree with you, I'm going to take LCC to win this game as well. Uh, I think their defense is too tough, and I think Anthony is quite possibly the greatest athlete we've ever seen at the at the one level. I wouldn't go that far. He I mean he's That's, in the team picture. There's been some good ones in one A. I wouldn't say the greatest. I think some folks in Sheridan will buy you a what Brent Love over the years and whatnot. But uh, um, he's up there. Don't get me wrong, he's in the team picture, but this class for Lafayette Central Catholic with a win could be 51 and 2 in their entire four years career with three state championships, and that would be just a phenomenal. And the two losses would be by a combined seven points. Let's uh, move up to 2A. This is a matchup that I think uh, a lot of people expected to see. I think out of, out of all classes, this would be the matchup that I think was most predictable. You know, I only made one Chiefs head lock all year. Do you remember what it was? I think uh, you might have uh, once said this game was probably going to happen. Yes, it was a lot. And guess what? The cheese head is never wrong. Yeah, well... Well, most of the time. <laughs> no, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And when you look at these two ball clubs, uh, Fort Wayne Bishop Coolers and Emerson Modern Day, uh, they have a lot of similarities. You know, they, they both come from um, inner city conferences where they're, they're the small fish in the big pond. You know, when you think of Evansville, you've got teams like uh, you know, Wrights, Castle, uh, North, uh, Memorial. I mean, you've, goes on. Yeah, I mean, you've got some, some big fish and certainly schools like Wrights and Memorial who have been to the state finals over the last few years. And then, of course, in Fort Wayne, when you got to play teams like Blair and Snyder, you know, both of these teams, to say they're battle-tested, would be an understatement. I mean, they've been playing these bigger schools all season long, and, and for the most part, they did what they were supposed to do in this tournament up to this point. This should be, uh, this could quite possibly be the best matchup uh, out of the entire weekend. I'm, I'll be honest with you, this is going to be the best matchup this weekend, I think, when you look at the five matchups here. Uh, both of these teams have one loss, but for Lures, they're technically undefeated on the field. They had to forfeit a loss to Southside, and Modern Day's only loss was an overtime to Castle, who won uh, the conference championship. So both of these teams, Modern, uh, Modern Day's a spread team. They like to throw, but they do have a pretty good running back in Cody Hess with about 1,300 yards, but they're primarily a, a spread team, a run-and-shoot team. Lures has been there and done that. Dallas offensively, James Nappy, both your starter, the Smith kid, with the brother of Roderick Smith, who's currently at Ohio State, when he carried the Hardy the Hawks to a state championship as a freshman, if you remember, uh, five years ago. To me, I think the big key in this matchup, like the 1A game, is experience. Again, Lures going for their third in a row. It's been a while for modern day, back 10 years ago. Matter of fact, the last three times Modern Day's been here, they played Bishop Lures in the state championship game. The only other time was 94 when they lost to the Bremen Lions. But still, I just think that poise and experience is going to be the difference in this one. And that he's been there and done it. He's got great weapons. Modern Day's got great weapons. But I'm going to go with the senior leadership of James Daphne here at Bishop Lures. This is going to be the best game of the weekend. And I think Lures finds a way to get it done. It's going to be a shootout. I like the Knights. Bishop Lures, 35-28. Uh, 
I think once again I'm going to have to completely agree about this pick. I mean, uh, both offenses are exceptional. Both teams have the ability to put up points in a very short period of time. And of course, when you think of Lures, I mean, they've got at least three or four legitimate uh, Division One athletes, and nobody's been able to slow them, slow them down at all this season. Uh, they're going to pose a huge problem because, you know, if, if you want to stack the box to try to stop Jalen Smith in the running game, you got to worry about Mike Rogers and, and James Napke in, in, the passing, in the passing game. So uh, it's going to be a colossal challenge uh, for modern day to try to slow down the Knights' offense. Uh, but also I think, uh, you know, likewise, this might be the best offense that Lures has faced all season long, too. That's so sorry because they play some pretty good teams there in the SAC. So I, I'm with you as far as I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. I think uh, I think the offenses are going to win over for the most part. But I think when it comes down to the fourth quarter, as you alluded to, experience it makes a, it's, it's a huge factor. A quarterback that that has been here two years in a row, you know, two consecutive state championships, they know what they know uh, what to do when they get down here. They're not going to be uh, you know awestruck by the you know by this facility by the, um, you know, just the festivities in itself. Lures will be completely focused. I think they will get the job done. I think they will win their third consecutive state championship. Probably about a, a seven to 10 point game. I'll take Lures to win this one. All right. And let's move on to the only uh, rematch that we have from last year's uh, state finals. Uh, South Bend St. Joseph taking on Indianapolis Chittard. Uh, both of these teams, no strangers to this game. And as I just alluded to, they played each other last year. Which this was is the third time in five years since we yeah, had a championship yeah. game at St. Joe and Chittard. And, this, and it, was a great, it was a great game last year. I tell you what, it was very Two exciting. touchdown game, but a lot closer than I that. I think so. I would agree with you. Uh, it was a much closer game. And I think uh, uh, both of these teams, you know, I think had the expectations uh, at the beginning of the season that they could make a run to get down here. And you look at the, the conference that St. Joe plays in three state um, finalists in the NIC conference with uh, South and Washington and Penn. They've been battle tested. They had a very tough road during the regular season. And when you think of the playoffs, they had to avenge a loss. They had to miss Walker Marion in the regular season. Done. Go to Jimtown, play against the Jims had a real tough team. Done. And then, of course, last week, you saw them in person against West Lafayette, a team that was here two years ago, done. And now they, they had, had a good and during, and during that stretch, 10 quarters plus of scoreless football. So um, you know, they've certainly proven themselves. And, and the one thing that you had told me you know, before we got here was, was uh, about you know, their defense, the toughness, the tenacity of, of, of their defense. Small boat Downey, Bella God, they are huge in that linebacking court for the Indians. Uh, you know, we talked about the 2A game is going to be offense, offense. This 3A game is going to be defense. And Shatar, they do have big play capability. And Vince Lawrence Otto has told, you know, I've had the chance to talk with them. This is the best passing team he's brought you. He's actually got a quarterback who's thrown for 2,200 yards. That's very un shatar like with Max Van Fleet. They also got a great running back. Hey, another Kleinschmidt. Ryan Kleinschmidt is just a playmaker. Just many familiar names up and down. But I think in this one, the defenses are going to stand out. Both of these teams play stellar defense. I think St. Joe's has players on the defensive side of the ball to be able to contain the Shatar offense. But the question is, can St. Joe muster anything offensively against the Shatar defense? Seeing them last week, three touchdowns for the Indians. They got one out of pick six. They got another one out of hook and ladder set up by field position at the end of the half. They really only had one drive total for score that game, and that was in the fourth quarter to help put the game away uh, over at school field. I think that's going to be a big question mark. The Indians are going to have to find a way. You know, Nick Carmona's done a nice job. David Arsenal's a good running back, but I don't know if they're going to be able to break through Nation's our defense. This is going to be, I think, a great game on the defensive side of the ball. It's going to be a slugfest, and this might be a game where seven points might be enough to win it, and that's going to be my prediction. I like Shatar. 7 nothing over St. Joe. Well, I think I'm going to have to say you're, you're spot on again. Uh, uh, I think you're right. I think the defenses will win over. Uh, you know, St. Joe, you know, the, the, they, they've won games because of their defense. And you, know, you talk about the 10 scoreless quarters and uh, 
they've been they've been phenomenal as far as you know defensive wise shutting down teams. Um, Shatar, you know, they're, they're more of a, a balanced attack. Uh, but, but as you mentioned, you know, a quarterback for th throwing for that many yards in a Shatar offense, that Here's is a, a huge deal. question. You know who has scored the most points this year against St. Joe? The Chester Trojans in the opening week of the season. How about that, folks? Wow. 28 points. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> You're stunned. Well, yeah, well, I think Penn put up 28, too, didn't they? Uh... Yeah, it was 28-2, but so there you go. 28, but Chester right. is in there. I know, I know. We want Congratulations. To make, we we got to make a plug for, for that. Okay. but It is Regent Sports Test. Right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. And I think looking at, at this matchup, uh, you know, the defenses are going to rule the day. Uh, and, and this is going to come down to, to points scored. Is St. Joe going to be able to drive the football? You know, they might have to get a score on their defense. Their defense might have to set up a score. Or maybe special teams. They're going to have to find different ways um, to get the ball in the end zone. I'm not sure they could drive 80 yards on the Shatar defense uh, to, to score a touchdown. Uh, but I think I'm with you as far as the pick's concerned. I think Shatar, uh, you know, having won this game last year, uh, and, and certainly you know, the road that they've taken, they've been very impressive the entire postseason. They put up some high point totals. I mean, they took out you know, a pretty good court on Central team last week, and in Indian Creek, it wasn't even close. So they put up some high point totals offensively. I think Chittard might be able to put up 10 to 14 points, and I think that will be enough. Uh, I just don't think St. Joe can put up enough offense to win. I'll take Chittard to win this game as well. And this, this uh, 4 a matchup, this might be the most uh, intriguing, entertaining matchup out of all the games. Uh, South Bend, Washington, with their you know two-headed monster of Garrett Dieter and David Perkins, taking on a very seasoned uh, Cathedral team who's been here and done that. The experience of winning the state championship last year. Uh, this is going to be very uh, I don't know. It's a, it's an intriguing contest when you think of you know the big the playmakers, big play potential. South Bend, Washington, throwing it all on the field, put up some high point totals. Can they do that against this? Cathedral defense. It's an interesting matchup from the historic perspective. This is a rematch of the very first 3A championship game of 1973, by the way, when Washington defeated Cathedral at school field in South Bend. Back when they actually had teams host state championship games. They only did that for about three years. But the very first 3A game, the legendary Beans fan camp coached Washington to a 1913 win over the Fighting Irish. So the revenge factor is big time in this oh, game. Yeah. yeah, right. Um, here's the thing that I think is going to be a major concern if I'm Antoine Jones. There's a spread team that likes to throw the ball all over the They like to go for the home run on every play. The last two weeks, Cathedral has faced teams that are just like that. Pendleton Heights and, of course, Gunner Keel and Columbus East last week. How many points are they going to give up in the last two games? Seven. They made life miserable for Pendleton Heights and showing them up. They made life miserable for Gunnar Keel and the Olympians of Columbus East. 62 points against them. That is a major, major red flag and a major area of concern if I'm Antoine George. I also believe David Perkins might have got nicked up a little bit last week in a win over the Leo Lions, which um, could be something to keep an eye on. Derek Dieter's had a great year. Perkins has had a great year. Deja Morgan is the wild card, I think, for Washington. He's going to have to have a big game if the Panthers have shot this one, but Cathedral, you know, it's back to a traditional Cathedral team. Last year we saw the JT, they were throwing the ball all over the place for Carter Barthel. This time, there are more ball control, brought it out. They can throw the ball if they need to with Corey Bam, but Nick, uh, Gino Gillum and Luke Curlton had a game. Like, he had like 50 yards a carry. He only has 300 yards on the season. He had 200 last week against Columbus East. So, this is a traditional you know, Cathedral team, balanced offensively, power running, in your face defense, I think of the games this weekend, it's been a great story for Washington, but I think this is going to be the game with the widest margin. I see Cathedral, it would not shock me to win this one by four or five touchdowns, but I'm going to say a 35-10 type ball game here if the Irish win this one comfortably. You know, I've seen Cathedral play a couple of times times this year. I think what's, what really impressed me most about um, the Fighting Irish was their play in the trenches, both sides of the ball. Their offensive and defensive lines, are extraordinarily good, and uh, you know they're going to put some pressure on Morgan. I mean, they're going to they're going to bring some bring some pressure. 
And, and I think you're right as far as you know the wild card name. How is he going to respond? He's only a sophomore quarterback. He's had a great year. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, this is uh, he's going to face pressure he hasn't seen all season long. If he thought you know playing Penn was tough, uh, this is going to be like three times worse. So. And they thought you know, and Morton actually really did a great job of getting pressure on him in a regional championship. We didn't see the game for last week against Leo, but Morton was able to get pressure for his four, tur four turnovers. What's the theater going to do? Yeah, that, uh, that's that's going to be a recipe for disaster. And I think also, you know, just the, the, the toughness, the physicality of Cathedral. Um, I think their ability to wear down defenses, uh, certainly, uh, you know, I, I, the, the one game that I look at, I look at um, South, you know, South Washington's game against Penn. Um, they only put up six points in that game. Their offense really struggled. And don't I, I think it's a 12-point effort against Adams, too. Yeah, I, I just, I think Cathedral's, uh, you know, every bit as good as Penn, as, as, as physical and, and just their ability to, you know, to, to play physical, run the football. Uh, they're every bit as good as, good as Penn, maybe if we thought a little bit better. They're one of the best teams in the entire state, regardless of class. Washington's going to have a hard time keeping up. And, and you know, another point that you brought up, going for the home run. This is a team that grinds out first downs, goes on methodical 80-yard drive. They want a quick strike you to death. Yeah. That's their game. And that's, I mean, that's, it's not going to be a good approach in this game because Cathedral's going to be content with, with grinding it out. They'll take those ADR drafts. They'll, they'll pound the football. We'll take six, seven minutes yeah. off the clock. Thank you very much. And then if you want to go out the next possession and, and you know, throw three passes free and out, that plays right in the Cathedral's hands. I think Cathedral's going to build a, a lead early in this game, you know, a two to three touchdown lead. Washington's going to scramble to try to get back into it. It's not going to work. Uh, I think this is going to be all cathedral. I think you're absolutely right. This is going to be a lopsided game. I'll take the Irish to win this one comfortable. Well, let's go on to the uh, the final game, the 5A state championship. And you want to talk about a match of, of you know, traditional powers, Carlo and Penn. It, it really doesn't get any bigger than that. You think about you know the number of state championships that these schools have won in between them. It's, it's Carlo alone, well uh, if you add up the individual team, they're about 150. That's a lot, folks. They, think, they have to build a separate building just for all the trophies. But I, I think, I mean, if you think about the northern half of the state, I don't think there's a program with more prestige than that. No, I mean, there's very few uh, that rival with stuff. Yeah, for all around sports programs, Penn's got to be up there as far as prestige. It's not just the football, but all the other sports. Too. Yeah, they were a state runner up in basketball, traditionally great base, uh, baseball. They won a softball title just a few weeks ago. But yeah, northern part of the state, Penn is, uh, I guess you could say, the uh, the whole enchilada, huh? Yeah, no question about it. Uh, they beat a pretty good Snyder team last week. Uh, uh, beat them pretty handily at home. And now they're gonna they're gonna play here uh, against the big boys against Carmel. And, you know, I think what Penn's done has been impressive. But you know, let's let's be honest with ourselves here. Uh, we both know the South and 5A Especially tra traditionally. Indianapolis. Yeah, I mean, you know. Carmel's gone through a gauntlet the last three weeks. They've had to go against really they, three teams in their own conference. They've had their stretches though, where if you think about it, they've had to come overcome bottoms. Think about it. Twice against Ward Central down, 19 to nothing, and 20 to nothing. They withstood a late two-point conversion to reason. Last week they spotted Center Road a 17 to nothing lead after building a 42 to nothing lead in the first match of back in week three. And uh, I was listening to Dick Dullahan talking to. Uh, Kevin Wright, that was a 59-point sweep for week three, but they were able to find a way and get it done. Uh, Kevin Wright's been there and done that just the second year at the helmet of Greyhound. What do you know about Penn? They're going to play, the, you know, the, the Wild Bunch defense is going to be rock solid. They're going to play Smash Bob. they got a sophomore quarterback who's really good at Zach Oakley, who's been outstanding. Um, but the thing, Penn's notorious for a special team. I think the last three weeks they've got a special team touchdown in each of their last three games. It was the clinching touchdown against Crown Point. They opened the second half last week against Snyder with a kick return for a touchdown. So Penn, usually year in and year out, is probably the best of the state when it comes to that phase of the game. And that might be a key part of the game for them to try to tie the, the win of the state championship, which will be their first since 2000. Yeah, and really, uh, the last time they were here, uh, they played one of the one of the best teams in the country, Warren Central, in 2003. And Fifty to nothing at the half. I still remember it like yesterday, and that was Cody Oldman's first year. So, 
Uh, he's going up against Kevin Wright squad again. You think that's a little bit in the back of Corey Yeoman's play? I think this purple team, however, they don't have the speed and athleticism that that Ward Simple team. But the one thing that they do, they're big up front. They're yeah. a little big up, but this Greyhound team is massive in the trenches. I, I think that's my big biggest concern with Penn. How are they going to deal with the physicality of Carmel? I mean, they've got a, you know they've got some Division One athletes defensively, and especially on the defensive line, Penn's right. going to have to deal with deal, deal with those guys up front. Uh, Penn's going to struggle to try to run. You know, if their MO is going to run, be running the football in this game, uh, it's it's not going to happen. It's going to be a struggle. I think Penn putting points on the board offensively. That's where they're going to struggle. Here's a number to keep an eye on. And keep in mind, this is the competition. Carmel is facing week after week. They're playing the likes of Ward Central. They're playing the likes of Ben Davis. They're playing the likes of Center Road. Some of those teams twice. Carmel is giving up 74 yards rushing a game by the season. That's and I, and that's, that's impressive. Yeah, that's that's trouble. You know, I I admire what Penn's done. They, you know, they've had a nice run here in the playoffs. But truth be told, these teams up north. Are not even close to what what Carmel has played the last three weeks. It's just, it's just not. I mean, Ben Davis, Warren Central, and even well, every, the center, entire season. That's and, 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 and Center Grove, really by their standards, they've had kind of a down season, and and Center Grove almost beat them. You know, that just tells you how talented their conference is. I I don't think Penn can put up enough points offensively. If they score more than a touchdown, I, I think I'd be surprised. I think. You know, their special teams and defense are going to find a way to keep them in the game. I think this game has the potential, let me say it again, potential of being a pretty good game. But again, I just think Carmel offensively, is going to wear, that offensive front is going to wear down Penn. Uh, uh, it's going to be a decent game, but I'm going to say Carmel wins this one, a 24-10 type ball game. I was going to say, I, I was going to say like 21 7, something like that. We're uh, in the ballpark. Yeah, uh, I just I just don't think Penn can put up enough points. And I think you know, Carmel's you know, too, too battle tested. They've got better athletes than what Penn has seen this season. I think they will wear down Penn's defense. Carmel's going to win a 5A state championship. I don't think any of us are going to be surprised to see no. that. But uh, hopefully we have a good week uh, of, of state finals action. Hopefully these games are competitive. I want to see some good competitive games. These are the you know presumably uh, you know best teams in the state of Indiana. I want to see. And I and, and I know a lot of people are moaning to complain that we got seven parochial private teams. Let's be honest, folks. These are the best teams here. They paid her due to the IHSAA. They're all that fuck you know, the, the best of the best. They're here. It's going to be great crowd support, I believe, and we the best team win. And uh, JT is going to blast this year. Oh, it certainly has. All right. Well, don't eat too much turkey this week. Hey, if you can't make it, make sure you listen to all the games on Mid American Broadcasting. Uh, we're going to be switching back and forth between games, so it should be a lot of fun. So we'll see you next season.